<clears throat> this is the typical guide kit. Um, it's got these cones that have, looks like about a 45 degree angle on them. And then it's got the reamer which hooks into a hand drill. Now these chunk, those cones are interchangeable depending on the diameter of the valve that you use. And this reamer of the first few thousandths has a three, uh, 342 pilot and then the piece that gets larger that cuts it. I believe it's about 30 thousandths bigger for the guideliner to slide in. Let's get a little closer view here. What it'll do is it'll use the centering pilot to go off of the, the 342, 11 30 seconds. And it comes down and it stops and it's spring-loaded deal there's your cone now the trick to this is, is like I said it's a feel thing you'll take your two fingers and you kind of hold it and you keep your pressure try to keep it constant I would say above half speed on a, on a regular drill this Milwaukee drill I got somewhere between half to three quarters Wow, that turkey hung up on me that time. That must be part of them damn spirals. Wow. All right, looks like I had a little bitty piece of that damn spiral left in there. I don't know how that happened. Here's another one. Alright, there we go. That was much better. Anyway, um, I'll go ahead right now and I'll go ahead and ring the rest of the holes and I'll show you how I put the guides in in just a minute. Now, on this particular deal here, I do something I don't normally do. I'm going to use a touch of Loctite on the outside of the guide, which is something normally you don't do, and I'll tell you why. Because this thing, some idiot put these damn cheap spirals in there. Um, I just don't feel secure without that Loctite in there. I mean, probably it would be okay, but I'm just the kind of guy, I don't like to take chances. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a dab of Loctite on each guide as I shove it through. I mean, I had a good clean hit, but still, I just don't like to take chances. All right, let's go on to the next part. This part of the operation, of course, we have to turn the head around the other way. Now take me a little cleaning brush and go through there, try to get any of the loose particles out. I always do the intakes first, then the exhaust. And when I'm pretty sure I got that done, here's the trick. Here's the liners. Mine have beveled edges and the little spiral oil grooves in it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, touch Loctite. I start right up here at the top, come around. Like I said, I, I rarely use Loctite. Most of the time I use either WD-40 or 30 weight oil. But whenever something gets weird, I've just always been somebody who likes to take that little bitty extra step of precaution. Because I know when I put this on there that these turkeys will never come out. Alright. Let's get this in there. You take this, your liner, and this has got a liner installation to it. It's a little springy dingy, and it slides in that. Your bevel then always goes front. Now, I've always put the crease on the guide. This is just personal habit in the center. Then I'll put it in there and begin the drive. And it's that simple. You just go in there and you uh, 
put the liners in. The installation is the easy part. The hard part is when you have to hone them and size them. All right, the compression. I go to the tightest uh, brooch. This is a steel shaft called a brooch, and it's got these two enlarged areas, like radius is kind of. And it goes in there and it compresses the guide against the wall. Gives it kind of a squish. These are sized a half thousandths under the valve size and makes it get a good compression. Now, once I'm done there, I'm gonna let it sit for a little while, let that red Loctite dry first. Normally I could fly on through it right now, but I gotta let that red Loctite set. I go in here and take my hand hone out and I'll hand hone them after I radius the top and radius underneath. All right, that'll be the next step. Come back. My pet peeves about a lot of machine shops when they put guide liners in is the overhang when they install them that'll come over. Uh, <laughs> you mean you can take your finger, you can feel the sharp edges, they're straight up. It wouldn't take them much longer to do something. Here's a good example. Here's one right here I just noticed. Look at that. Okay, some of them are bad, and I mean, I've seen them come from the machine shops with this horse shit. So, let me show you all it would take to do this. This is how damn simple it is, but they won't take a minute to do it. When you get your heads, I wish y'all had a way to assemble them, because if you could take these machine shops and tell them to hand you the head unassembled, so you could look at it and inspect it yourself, you'd probably have a lot of complaints. Okay, all you do is you go in here. I've got a, a, a radius straight cylinder. I put a little bit of emphasis on the area. Put my pressure over there with that lift is. All right, there we go. Now see, that didn't take but a second to do that. And it just makes it a lot nicer. The reason I do it is because them little edges will falsify the dab blame reading on the guide measurement. Not to mention it can wreak havoc on your guide tool. your guide home when you're running it in and out. Now on the other side, I'm afraid it's usually a little worse. You try to control it, but it's hard. Let's see if I can get it there on you. All right, this one ain't too shabby, but you go down in there. And I try to go around a little bit. Here we go, here's one I can show you, it's pretty good. The one I was just doing, look at that. That's some overhang. I've seen them come out and have this on them and it just blows me away. Kind of hard to get to in that spot. All right, there we go. All right. That just makes it a lot better, but even that ain't enough, all right? You see how I tripped it and I get it level or maybe where it's counter something just a touch. Now I'm gonna show you something else. I'll at least level it or pick off, so what I'll do is I'll take my little, this is a spot facer, and just lightly go in there. And all I'm doing that for, if you look, 
is to try to level them. Try to pick off that base, the same amount of material, and then I will go in there with a little egg and lightly round it and touch it. That just kind of gets them all the same height, if you will, so that all of them are, the valve guides are equal in height coming out of there. All right, now I'm going to show you the next step in my procedure. Now, you remember I told you where I took that tool and set the depth? Well, now I take a little bitty egg and all I do is lightly touch the back side a little bit. And it just barely touches it, makes it a little level. Now I'm going to hit it from this side. Then all I do is turn around and touch it from the front side. And while I might not have it dead nuts within one 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 thousandths or zero zero one thousandths, it's going to be pretty close. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and touch the rest of them. We'll turn around, touch it, and then I'll show you the final prep that I do on the guide. Now remember, this is my stage three and four stuff. <laughs> I can't do it, the trimming of the guide on everything, but I do uh, chamfer both sides of the guide in this final trick that I'll show you. See how much better it is? Now if you look, you'll notice me and my big damn feet. Alright, I'm trying to get that height really close to level and it is, the viewfinder just ain't going to let me do it. The light has a lot to do with it. Pretty close, buddy. Pretty close. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to take and see how it left that little thickness. I'm going to pull that in. And pull this in. That part back part there is called a hood. And I'm just all I'm doing is I'm pulling that hood in and blending it really nice. Now I'm ready to go in there and uh, take my wedge and hit that chamfer. That is a finished bottleneck guide all the way through. All right, so you've seen how I touched it, hit it from the other side, pulled it down. Wow, it, it, it feels smooth to the touch, no sharp edges. All right, I'm going to set us up over here and show you the final part of chamfering the guide before we home. Now that I've got the... Um, the blending done around the cast iron part all smooth out. The last thing I do is I take this wedge. Let me get a little close up for you there. I take this wedge, which you know starts out small and it goes up big, and I put it inside the guide hole and I give her a few twists. That makes it blended in radius on the inside. Now, when I'm in there with my guide home, I won't go in there and hang the stone up. Because, boy, I tell you what, it's just like boring and honing a damn cylinder. You catch your stones, and them things are not cheap. The stone holder on that hone all is like $200 for one of them little pieces. And if you've got any kind of ridge on here, it'll snap it. Now, that ain't the reason I do it, per se. I do it because I like for both ends to be chamfered because it has a lot to do with um, correct guide clearance. Now, make sure I've got you focused on in here and I do it the same way. Sorry guys. Wish I had my one of my sons helping me, but heaven forbid that. Anyway, I go in here and I'll hit the top side the same way. Now I've got a chamfer. 
a good chamfer on the inside of the port and the outside. So now the falsified clearance won't be. Now what I mean by that is, if I didn't put that chamfer on here and I tried to put the valve in here, see they're, they're undersized, mainly it's from the Loctite, but um, if I didn't put that chamfer there, it could falsify the clearance when I go in there to hunt it because it'd be tight on the ends and a different size in the center. So anyway, I go on in here and hit them and that concludes mechanically putting the guides in, chamfering, prepping them, trimming them to the bottom of the guide, making sure there's no overhang and all that. Now, time to get serious. We're going to break out the hone all okay and we're going to take the valves and my measuring tools and I'm going to put 0012 on the intake 0015 to 16 on the exhaust about a half thousandth bigger on the exhaust than the intake now I cannot emphasize enough how important this is at the end of honing the guides I'm going to explain the reason why Quick sum up, the guides are the most important part of the valve job. You heard me right. The valve guide is the most important part of the valve job. If the guides are not perfectly straight and really tight right to the point where she almost seizes, the valve job, no matter what you do, ain't going to be worth a shit. Alright, we're fixing to, fixing to go into why that is here in just a second. 